my name is Karim. I'm here to talk to you about the universe. Um, it's quite a big subject to condense into five minutes, but we are where we are. <laughs> um, this picture here is a, it's a diagram of uh, gravitational waves. They've been in the news recently because um, they've been detected for the first time. Uh, Einstein predicted the existence of gravitational waves a uh, 100 years ago. Um, so it's quite a big deal, basically. Um, <coughs> the gravitational waves that were detected were the result of a collision of, black, of two black holes a billion years ago. And this event lasted only for under a second. Um, and it's a really important discovery because it expands hugely how we can start to think about the cosmos. So next, I'm going to talk about the sun <laughs> um, to help demonstrate how large the universe is. <laughs> so the sun produces a lot of light. Light is the fastest thing that we know of. It travels at 186,000 miles per second. The sun is so far away from the Earth that it takes light, the fastest thing that we know of. It takes eight minutes to get to the Earth. Next, I want to zoom out a bit. Uh, this red dot in the top right of the screen, it's a galaxy that the Hubble telescope detected. And it is the furthest away object that's ever been photographed. Um, and that's a distance of 13.2 billion light years away. So what we're looking at here is light that has taken 13.2 billion years to reach planet Earth. And so with this idea, when we look up at the stars, we can kind of think about our perception of reality. Because what we see in the night sky is not really there. It was there in the past. Um, and the present, as we know it, is not really there. It's a very poignant point there. Um, <laughs> next, I want to talk to you about the Fornax cluster. Uh, for me, this is interesting because it's 65 million light years away. And... <laughs> yeah, it's my favourite number. Um, 65 million years ago, dinosaurs still ruled the Earth. So if you traveled to the Fornax galaxy, the Fornax cluster right now, and looked back at the Earth, the light that's coming from the Earth would show a bunch of dinosaurs running around. I mean, it's not really possible, though, because you need a really big telescope, etc. The dinosaurs would kind of be pixels that barely move, but you get the gist. <laughs> um, and so nearly finally... I just wanted to talk about the size of the, uh, the observable universe. So <coughs> the universe is 13.8 billion years old. And if we think about the way that it expands, because the current school of thought is that the universe is expanding, um, the observable universe is actually 93 billion light years in diameter with Earth at the center. <coughs> And what's outside of this? Nobody knows. <laughs> a scientist recently calculated that outside of the observable universe is an area that is three times 10 to the 23 times bigger than the observable universe. But we have no way of knowing. Um, <laughs> it could, it, it, the universe could be an infinite size, or there could be plenty of other universes. And the final slide that I want to talk about, this is a famous photo known as the pale blue dot. It was taken by the Voyager 1 spacecraft on Valentine's Day, 1990. It's famous because it's, the, it's a photo of the Earth from the largest ever distance of 6 billion kilometers. And so if you look at that pale blue dot across the brown ray of light, that's planet Earth. And I just want to share with you a quote from Carl Sagan. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. 
On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being, whoever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt po politician, every soup star, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. So why am I telling you this? <laughs> I feel, as human beings, it's important to gain a bit of perspective. We often feel like we are the centre of the universe. We are the centre of the observable universe, sure. It's only natural, though, because life on Earth is all that we really know. But in acknowledging the magnitude of the universe and its implications for our understanding of reality, we are better placed to take a step back and deal with life's issues. I find these thoughts calming and liberating. The pressure's off. There are, some things, <laughs> there are some things that are out of your hands. Just as we can learn to accept the unfathom unfathomable vastness of the universe, and for these reasons, we should always look to have a galactic, pers <coughs> a galactic perspective when facing our greatest fears on this pale blue dot. Thank you.